guys, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use the coincident, not coincident constraint, I'm so sorry, the concentric constraint. So I want to just see how you pronounce that. Okay. Concentric, concentric, yeah. Okay, concentric. I knew that. Um, I'm going to teach you guys how to use the concentric constraint and the parallel constraint in this video. So how what we're going to do first is we're going to create a sketch as I've done here. I'm going to just show you guys how to do it. So I'm going to first click on my top plane, get to the plane I want to create my sketch on, and then I'm going to click the sketch button up here. Then what I'm going to do is this is not a really comfortable angle to draw a sketch in. So I'm going to right click on the sketch plane and click on view normal, view normal to sketch plane. Now what I'm going to do, since this is a much more comfortable angle, is I want to first explain to you guys what the concentric um, tool does. So as Onshape puts it, constraint, it constraints circles and arcs to share a common center point. So what it does is it makes sure that any two circles of any different size will share the same midpoint. And it works for arcs as well. So the first example I'm going to show you guys is with circles. So I'm going to first create a center point circle this time. Um, and I'm going to click on the, actually, no, I'm going to click somewhere random. And I'm going to make a pig circle. Like, I'm going to make this six inches. Okay, not that it makes a difference, but okay. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another center point circle. And I'm going to make it completely random positioning, right? I'm going to make it it's really small, like this, yeah. And I'm gonna make it 2.5 inches. Not that the dimension actually matters for the constraint, but okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I actually want to make these concentric at the origin, right? I don't want them to be here or here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the coincident constraint. So if you guys um, haven't watched that video, I highly suggest that you do watch it if you guys want to know what the coincident constraint does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a brief explanation anyways. It makes two points or two figures share the same location, right? So I'm going to click on my coincident constraint and I'm going to select the big circle and the origin. I only need to select one because I'm going to make one concentric to the other anyways. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to my constraints tool and click on concentric. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the center point of the smaller circle and the origin or the center point of the big circle. And I'm going to make it concentric. So see the midpoints are the same, it's at the origin. Um, so that's how you use the concentric um, constraint. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to use the tangent and parallel constraints. So what I'm going to do is I want to make two parallel lines that are touching at the curve of either of this edge of the circle as well as this curve of the set circle. So what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to first show you guys I'm going to make a line, right? I'm going to use my line tool. And so before I draw my line, actually, I'm going to explain to you briefly what the term tangent means. It means a line touching at a curve of a circle, right? So it makes two curves to be tangent. So let's search up an Oxford dictionary <laughs> explanation because I'm terrible at definitions. I have, I tried to expand my vocabulary. So let's see what the what Oxford defines as tangent. A straight line or a plane that touches a curve or a curved surface at a point, but if extended, does not cross it at that point. So it looks sort of like this, excuse me. It's a curve and the line is tangent because it only touches that point once and it doesn't recross it again, right? So that's what tangent means in very specific terms. So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw my line, right? I'm going to draw my line. I'm going to draw it like way out. And then I'm going to draw um, another line, which is really random. Um, and I'm going to dimension it, not that it matters, but I'm going to dimension it to eight inches. 
and I'm going to dimension this to seven inches. And now what I'm going to do is I want to make these two lines parallel, right? I want to make them never so that they never touch ever, right? Even though they're just line segments, I don't want them to ever touch. So, but for that, I can make it, but I want them to be tangent to these circles, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come to my constraints tool and I want to make, I'm gonna click on the tangent constraint and I'm gonna select this blue line and the circle like so. And now these line is tangent because it only connects. If I were to come out of the tangent and mark the point where it's tangent, it's tangent right about here, I believe, right there. And it never ever, this line will never, not line segment, excuse me, will never ever touch that point again, right? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this line tangent to this circle, right? There we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make them parallel. So I'm gonna come to my constraints and I'm gonna click on the parallel constraint. I'm gonna select this line and this line. And see, it makes it straight. And now these line segments will never ever touch, right? So the final example that I'm gonna give you guys is actually of another kind of centric constraint. I'm sorry, um, it's with an arc this time. I just wanna like, let you guys see how it works with an arc, how the um, concentric works with an arc. So what the concentric really means is it shares the same midpoint at the curved surface, right? So I'm going to first make a three-point arc because it's the most clear, in my opinion. Um, I guess I'm going to make it from this point. Oops, sorry, I forgot to select the tool. From this point and from the end of that segment, and I'm going to make it this tall. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same for this arc. I'm going to use it from here to here, and I'm going to make it to that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be really careful and hover over this point. See how it shares a coincident constraint? Um, the reason why I want to delete this constraint is because it's not going to let the midpoints move because there's a condition that the dimension has to be the same and the um, constraint the, it, that the point needs to stay exactly where it is. So what I'm gonna do, I don't want that. I want the arc to be able to move. So I'm gonna delete the sketch entity. I'm gonna hover over it. And when I see it, um, when I hover over it, it, the constraint symbol in the entire arc should highlight yellow. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and click on delete sketch entity. I'm gonna do the same for this arc. And this point. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come to the concentric tool. I'm gonna select the concentric. And I'm going to hover over this arc and select this arc. So now they share the same midpoint. It may not be evident because we don't know where the midpoint of the arc actually lies. But if you notice, this is the midpoint of the arc. So, actually, no, that's not the midpoint of the arc. Um, let's see if we can find the midpoint of the arc. Yeah, no, um, <laughs> I'm running out of time. But for now, that's how you use the concentric, the tangent, and the parallel tool. If you guys have any questions, as always, please do put them down in the comments or email me. Um, with the email, I'm going to put it down in the description. So yeah, thank you so, so much for your love and support. And I actually wanted to ask you guys one last favor. For the people who watch my channel, um, can you guys please care to leave some pieces of feedback? I'm actually trying to improve my channel so I can read out to the broader community, including children. So if you guys could let me know how I could improve my channel, then I would be glad to do it. Thank you so, so much, guys, for your love and support. Bye.